Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? So I am so excited for this video because we're gonna be testing out a new indie brand called Dandy Lions Co. And I say new because they're new to me and this is my first time featuring them on my channel, but they actually have been selling on Etsy since 2018. So I am very excited to finally get my hands on one of their products. They came out with a spring palette and this is called the Breath of Spring, which is so adorable. I thought the color story was pretty. I heard people kind of just, I would hear a little bit of whispers here and there about this brand, but then when I saw the packaging, I just thought it was so innovative and cute and such a nice way to take a cheaper packaging and make it unique because, you know, a lot of indie brands, when they start out, they have palettes like this. I don't know if you can tell, it's just like the most basic palette ever, and it's probably, I'm assuming, the cheapest option, and they stick a sticker on it, and that's fine. Like, that's one of the beautiful things about growing with an indie brand is getting to see them, like, slowly get to do more custom packaging and invest in themselves, but I think they took this cheaper plasticky packaging and designed it with all these flowers and like little tiny bees and just made it the cutest, most adorable thing. So I think the packaging is actually what made me kind of want to give them a chance. It was like, oh, that's really smart and adorable. Here is what the palette looks like on the inside. It did come with a plastic sheet, but I already took it out when I took a picture for Instagram earlier. All of the names are taped on the inside as well. And then as you can see, it's kind of it's kind of rainbow-esque, but it is like a monochromatic rainbow where you've got three pinky shades, three purpley shades, three blue shades, three green shades, and three yellow shades to where if you want to do a monochromatic look, you pretty much can because you have a lighter shimmer, a darker shimmer, and a matte for each color. It kind of reminds me of the concept of the Violet Voss Sugar Crystal palettes, which also has a darker shimmer and matte and a very like light inner corner type shimmer for each color story. And it's also like a rainbow, but this is of course a small indie brand, which makes it that much more exciting to get to try. So I'm just going to give you some quick information on this palette before we jump into the fun part, which would be the swatches and the eye look. The palette does retail for $40 and they have free US shipping. They are sold on Etsy. And then under the information for their palette, they say that it is vegan, cruelty-free, and talc-free. They also say to make sure to use a light hand with the mattes to help minimize kick up. A primer works best with the mattes to really make them pop. Cherry Blossom and Wisteria Wisp I especially recommend priming prior. Poison Ivy appears darker in the close-up swatch picture than actually depicted and is more of a leaf green. They also have all of the ingredients clearly listed out and they have descriptions for every single shade. So I really appreciate that they have such an in-depth item details because sometimes going into smaller brands, it's a little bit harder to find information. They don't have exactly the total grams of the palette, but they are 26 millimeter pans and it says they are glued in for safekeeping. So now let's go ahead and do some swatches. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch them in their color stories just because I feel like that's what makes the most sense. So starting off with the pinks, we have Candied Carnation. So right off the bat, it does seem more like a satin and it feels a little bit more powdery to the touch, but it has good pigmentation. It's a very pretty kind of hot pink. And then we have Cherry Blossom, which is almost more of like a light mauve. It does have a bit of purple undertones in there. And again, it's a little bit more powdery, but it's pretty soft. There's some kickback, but it feels smooth to the touch. And then we have Crystal Cosmos, which looks so pretty. It's a very light iridescent pink shimmer. Well, that's pretty. I like the tone of that one. Very pastel. I feel like on my fingers, that like last shimmer looks stunning. But on the arm, it's definitely a little bit softer. All right, next jumping into the purple row. First, we have Violetta, Violetta, which is a pretty true bright purple again. Just feels a little bit more like a satin. And then we have Wisteria Wisps, which is a really pretty kind of more gray toned purple. I just feel like it has a little bit of a mutedness to it. And then there is Hyacinth Diamonds, which is a beautiful light purple metallic. I feel like so far these are feeling very, very like soft and not even just like soft texture wise, but just the way that they look is very soft. So I'm thinking maybe if you're someone who's a little bit more scared of color, you like to have more of a soft look, this might be for you because they're just like softer satins. The mattes are a little bit 
softer. I don't know how else to describe them. So next jumping into the blues, we have Delphinium Dreams. Can you tell I'm not up to date on my botany? So that's a really, really bright blue. And then we have Forget Me Not, which is a really beautiful blue with a tiny touch of purple undertone. I feel like that one felt pretty pigmented. And then we have Blooming Bellflower, which is a light kind of icy metallic blue. That one felt more powdery. Next, jumping into the greens, we have Lily Pad, which looks to be a pretty just true kind of like, I don't even know, like a grass green. And then we have Poison Ivy, which is, that one feels pretty pigmented as well. Just another matte true green. And then this one, Sapling, is so pretty. I like, as soon as I looked at this palette in person, I'm like, that's one of those shades I have to use first. It's just like a very kind of like light minty icy green but very but not much blue undertone there's just something about it that really called to me and then last but not least we have the yellows so starting off with yellow jacket which is a very bright yellow and then we have honeybee which is almost I mean, it's, it's a brighter yellow, but it has like the tiniest, tiniest little tinge of mustardiness to it. It's a pretty tone. And then we have the shade Dainty Daffodil, which is another one I'm excited about because it's a very light, pale yellow. And I feel like shades like that just don't show up. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Shades like that just don't show up in as many palettes. I don't know what there is about like that kind of like tone of like a light yellow. I feel like that's pretty wearable. And I just, I feel like you rarely ever see them. Like I only have... A few that I can think of and I have an extensive palette collection so all right so there's all of the swatches I feel like the yellow probably looked the most promising I don't know I feel like these are very very soft so I'm hoping that the mattes will perform better when I have them on the primer that I'm gonna use and I'm thinking maybe for the shimmers I'll use a little bit of glitter glue just to kind of amp them up because I can tell you right away just from feeling them they are very soft satiny type shimmers and I'm like I go for super intense glittery like sparkly stained glass from Cleona type shimmers majority of the time so I think I definitely am gonna need the glitter glue but I really, really like that light yellow shade. I think the light green looks pretty. So jumping right on in, I already went ahead and primed with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Eye Primer. And I think after looking at the palette, what I'm most excited about to play with today would be the yellows and greens. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna follow my heart. I definitely do already have a bit of kickback just from swatching them. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and start off with this shade right here called Honey Bee. Definitely getting quite a bit of kickback in the pan as well as I'm dipping in. I'm just gonna take it on like a rounder, dense blending brush and I'm gonna use that shade through my entire crease. And then just using it blending upwards. So the pigmentation looks good right off the bat. If you are using more pastel shades, I know this one's not quite as pastel, but if you bounce and kind of just tap the shade in and then blend it'll work better than immediately going in with windshield wiper motions I'm just building that up a little bit so I'm gonna grab this shade right here called poison ivy that matte green and I'm gonna pop it on my outer V just going in with a little bit I'm curious to see how these are gonna blend on top of one another I am gonna try and keep it on the outer V because I don't want to blend it too much. I want to have distinctly green and yellow. I mean, I feel like just right there, like just packing that green on, it definitely looks much more pigmented on the eye with primer than it did on my arm. Cause you know, I never ever prime before I swatch on my arm. I'm also not really getting any fallout. I am just slightly tapping off my brush before I go into my eye. I think I'm happy with that. I know it looks a little bit messy right now. I'm gonna go back into some more of Honey Bee. Just make sure that's staying super bright. I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab a clean blending brush. This one is the Kaleidos S1, which is actually really, really nice and fluffy. And I'm just going to lightly blend over the edge. 
Again, like I said, I'm not trying to mix the two colors too much. I just want them to be blended out enough. So before I go into my lid, I'm going to go into my NYX glitter glue just to make the shimmers a little bit more metallic and so that they stick really well for me. I'm just going to take it on a little flat brush and just dab that all across the lid. I'm going to start with this shade right here called Yellow Jacket just to see how bright it looks. And I'm going to tap that all over the lid. I feel like I am kind of having to pack it on, but it is very, very bright. And I think I'm actually going to go ahead and take that hmm, about two thirds of the way in. Okay, so now I'm going to take the deeper green metallic lily pad. Just picking that up on the same exact brush and I'm going to pop that on the remaining outer third. And then just kind of blending in between the yellow and the green. I did get just a tiny, tiny little bit of fallout from these shimmers. Nothing that won't wipe away though. I'm gonna go back into a little bit more of the yellow and just popping that over top just because I don't want there to be a harsh line between the two shades. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take a little pencil brush. This one is the Kaleidos S5. I'm gonna start by grabbing some more of the matte green Poison Ivy and I'm just popping that close to my lower lash line about halfway in. Next, I'm going to take the shade Sapling, that brighter green. I can't wait to give that its own little moment. I'm going to pop that on the inner half of the lower lash line, but I think I actually am going to pick up quite a bit of product and I'm going to spray it. This is just my Love Lux Beauty Setting Spray. I don't like it for the face, so I've been using it for my eyes for the longest time. I just think adding a little bit of setting spray to the shade is going to prevent fallout. Oh, that is, that is a beautiful color. I love it. That is so pretty. There's just something about the undertone. It's kind of like a spearmint, actually. I think that's how I would describe it. I'm just going to go ahead and grab my little Walmart color switch and get all of that green shade off. And then last but not least, one of the most exciting parts, I'm going to go ahead and take the shade Dainty Daffodil, that light yellow, and pop it in my inner corner. Again, I'm going to spray it. Oh, that is so pretty. I'm such a sucker for a pale yellow. Okay, so to finish off this look, I'm gonna go into my ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Teaspoon, which is a really pretty green. I'm gonna use the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, and I'll be right back. All right, so for my cheeks today, I already did blush, which was just my hourglass blush that's in my project pan, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the Nabla Ozone Highlighter, which is more of a gold. I thought that would be pretty with kind of the yellowy tones that are going on here. For lips today, I'm gonna go into my Buxom Gloss in the shade Debbie. I feel like this is a little bit unexpected, but I, there's just something about this corally color that makes me feel springy, and I feel like that just kind of goes with the vibes of this look and just like juicy coral lips. It is definitely a little bit more sheer. I've been going through my makeup collection trying to declutter and stuff and I just saw this and I was like, dang, I haven't used that in a while. It's so beautiful. I need to use it more. All right, you guys, so this is the finished look. I feel very, very springy right now. As you can probably see now, I did definitely kind of coordinate my eyes to go with my little sundress here and I just think that the actual look in general turned out really, really beautiful. I'm feeling kind of mixed about this palette. So I do give it props for being a really beautiful color story. I think it's stunning. I think there's some more really pretty pastel options in here and I can't wait to explore more of the cool side of this palette. I feel like it's not exactly my personal preference just because for these shimmers, they are very satiny and they're just like the softest iridescence to them. So I feel like in order to make them work, I'm always going to have to go in with a glitter glue or spray my brush just because these are not my personal preference. So that's not saying they're bad by any means. It's just not what I would typically go for. But that's the beauty of the beauty community is there is so much on the market that you can find exactly what you love. So if you are watching this and you're like, I love satins. I don't want anything too crazy. I want something softer. This could be perfect for you. The mattes, I felt like they blended really, really well on my eyes. They look pretty pigmented. I had no problem 
um, blending them on top of each other. I only used two mattes today, so definitely need to do more, like I said, and I can't wait to play with these pastels here because I do really like those tones. I love pink, purple, and blue together, so that'll be the next look that I do. Definitely let me know if you want to see more looks with this video, if you're interested in hearing more about the palette and my thoughts on it after using it more than one time. But from first impression, I feel like it's workable. I could probably make some really beautiful looks out of it, but is it going to be my end-all, be-all, holy grail spring palette? Probably not, just because I go for things that have a little bit more intensity to them. But I do really, really like the finished look, and I love the shimmer options here. I think those both looked so stunning, which makes me even more excited to try these three. I'm thinking any of those shades on the bottom row would be really beautiful inner corner highlights. So if you enjoy my content on indie makeup, definitely make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!